hello or hola. My name is Jonathan Luke McCormick and I'm pursuing my master's degree in education. I am from South Point, Ohio, which is not far from Marshall University's campus. As an undergrad, I obtained my bachelor's degree in Spanish and have upper intermediate fluency. I do not have a specific area of emphasis, but I have an individualized plan of study. I want to use the concepts and ideas I learned to teach Spanish better or even English. I have been a Spanish and English tutor for many years. The mix of classes has helped prepare me for TESOL, general teach philosophies, and how to interact in the public school system. I understand learners better, as well as planning technology, integrating responsible practices, and being a professional. Here is my portfolio story. If I were to choose an area of strength, I would say the use of technology in the classroom. As goal four of my capstone project, I had to meet indicators one and two. Indicator one being evaluate current and emerging technologies. And the second indicator is use a variety of experiences, use a variety of technology tools to develop engaging and learning experiences and assessment techniques. Finally, I needed to use appropriate technologies to accomplish professional and instructional tasks to meet Indicator 3. At the top, you can see the link to my Porta Portal, which meets Indicators 1 and 2. That has clickable links to other tech tools in the classroom. You can see links for Spanish practice, technology integration, and hardware, among other categories. One such activity that I'm proficient in is Kahoot, a game that game where users use their cell phones to learn with questions. It's fun because students can actually use their cell phones in class and see instant results on who is correct or not. I have knowledge of how to record videos with my phone as you can see with indicator 3. Although I'm taking a break from it, I made video recordings of myself and I put them on YouTube. When I graduate this semester, I plan on using YouTube as a platform to connect with possible students. Being a millennial helps me grasp new technology quickly too. I should add that learning to use technology is important in the 21st century, not just for me, but for my students as well. My students will probably have more advanced tasks with technology than me. Making the PowerPoint that I'm doing right now has been a challenge, even though I'm a millennial. Unfortunately, I know my area for improvement well, social and behavioral research, is goal five in my capstone project. Indicator one is about identifying contextual professional problems and issues within education and conduct related research. The second indicator is critically analyze and evaluate research findings and related implications. Finally, the third indicator is to protect the rights of human subjects by implementing ethical practices. I was able to meet indicators one and two by my research project in EDF 621 I had to act like it was writing a research paper without doing the qualitative part. And I met indicator three by using the CITI program exam. 
I am a careful person, but the quantitative analysis of educational research stumps me. I know to have professionals to review research through an IRB, use anonymity, and let participants be able to discontinue a study if needed. I get confused with the p-values, standard deviation, and Cronbach's alpha reliability formula still. The document on preview exercises has these measurements. Honestly, I think the best way to make up for this deficiency is to work one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. I could have easy questions on the measurements and have a person increase their difficulty as I progress slowly but surely. I am reminded of how I need this when I had Calculus 3. There are so many formulas and problems, but my professor was able to break it down so I could understand. I could probably get along by not knowing these measurements well, but with the importance of an educator, he or she should do his or her best to understand research. I don't want to just accept research because there could be a hidden agenda behind it. For example, I have done research on different learning styles such as visual, auditory, and kinesthetic, but there is no, not much empirical evidence that people's learning styles are clear cut. I have heard Professor state, research shows, and I wonder what research the teacher has actually looked at it. When looking at my future goals, I think it's good to look at goal six, professional responsibility. Indicators one and two are about providing artifacts or evidence and a supporting rationale sufficient to demonstrate an acceptable level of knowledge and skill in communicating effectively using oral, written, and or media-based methods with a device range of constituents, learners, families, etc., including the community. Also, a knowledge and skills engaging in lifelong learning through reflective practice, participating in learning communities, and related activities that promote professional growth. On the left, we have a project that I did in my secondary education class. We had different common problems that come up in the classroom, and we had to uh, write what we thought initially, and then as we progressed through the class, we wrote how we would change our approach to these different situations that commonly happen in school, but can be problematic. Also, one, another goal, or maybe the main goal, is to understand educational research better, especially when it turns scientific, which is a weakness, as I talked about previously with the Cronbach's formula. Also, another goal is to learn how to teach students with disabilities. I have benefited by learning RTI, or Response to Intervention which lessens the needs for special education classes, but I am sure there are other tricks or techniques that would be helpful for me. I have already explained how to improve the research weakness, but to help with learning tricks to teach disabled students, I need more experience working with them. I may volunteer to tutor or to take more of them on as a student. In my teaching, I can take note of what has worked and what has not. Thankfully, I know that patience is key. I think we should make sure they are given a reasonably challenging task as the rest of us to grow. Or to use some Vygotsky terms, we need to put students in their zone of proximal development where they need assistance but are able to complete the task with their efforts too. By realizing my strength and weaknesses, despite years of study, has reinforce that there is always room for improvement and that education is a lifelong practice. By making this portfolio, it has made me more confident because it has refreshed my memory that I have the tools to be a successful teacher. I recall how to apply standards and make effective lesson plans with them. Education will probably always be a challenge but I can feel confident because I've had to do challenging tasks multiple times. One reason is that starting in CI 623, we had to use standards from the beginning and make a lesson for the whole semester. 
in other classes I'm taking specifically on adult education or in this class we had to write a paper about adult education history and it's been the most difficult task despite two months after the beginning of class. Not only do I want to be more articulate, but I want to use this quality to make others better educated learners. I want to show that a person from a small town in questions about college can get a master's degree and be proficient with a challenging capstone project. Your planning with dedication can yield results. Thank you for your time. Well, gracias por escuchar.